Hi, I'm Martha Collison, a food writer and recipe creator. I live in Brighton with my husband Michael and I've got some great mid-week recipes to show you that are perfect for two or for the whole family. Pizza is one of our favourite dishes to have, it's loads of fun, helps us to reconnect in the kitchen after a busy day at work and is great for a cosy night in. In this series, sponsored by Mooty, I'm showing you some of my favourite weeknight recipes. Pizza is one of my favourites. I'm making this one in a frying pan so you get that takeaway style pizza at home and it's the perfect base for everyone to put their favourite toppings on. So first things first, we're going to make our dough. Now you might be thinking you don't want to get in from work and make a pizza dough from scratch, which is why I don't tend to do that. I would normally do it in the morning. If you're working from home, you could do it at lunch break. It proves really well in the fridge, so you could even do it the night before and have it ready for dinner the night after. So we've got some strong plain flour in a bowl and we're going to add to that our yeast and some salt. Salt is so important in bread doughs for flavour. If you miss it out, it will taste of nothing, so make sure that you put the salt in. Then once you've got those two in, I'm going to give them a mix using my hands. You can use a spoon if you'd prefer, but it is quite fun. The next thing we're going to add is some olive oil. So we want two tablespoons of oil and then we want enough lukewarm water to make a nice sticky dough. Right, so I've got a nice soft dough now, so I'm going to empty this out onto my worktop. And we might need a little bit more water just to get these floury patches in there to get it nice and elastic. Ordinarily for great pizza, you need a super hot pizza oven, but I've got a clever tip using a frying pan to get that nice crispy base that we all want on our pizza. There's nothing worse than a soggy pizza base. Beauty of this dinner is that all of the hard work gets done in advance, so when you get in the door, your dough's ready, you can get your toppings out and you can get straight on to cooking it. You don't have to be an expert kneader, I'm sure I don't have the best technique, just keep moving it about until all of those gluten strands are nice and elastic. When you press it with two fingers, it should spring back really nicely. The full recipe, if you're looking for it, is in the video description. So the dough is ready, so I'm going to pop it back into its bowl. You want to make sure it's greased with oil. Then you want to pop your dough into the bowl and cover it with a tea towel. You want to leave this at room temperature for one to two hours until doubled in size or it can go into the fridge for up to 24 hours. So you can see all those bubbles and now we want to knock it back. So we're just going to take a little bit of that air out so our pizzas are nice and uniform. So just a couple of folds to collapse out some of that air. Not all of it, I don't mind there being a few irregular ones. Then we just want to lightly oil our work surface so it doesn't get stuck. It's going to make this into a rough ball so I can divide it up and then use a knife to cut it into four pieces. So we've got our four pieces of dough. I'm going to shape them all into balls and then I'm going to put two of them into the freezer to use another day and two of them are going to rise at room temperature until we're ready to make our pizzas. So whilst the dough is rising, I'm going to prepare all of the toppings. You want to have every single topping ready to go because as soon as the pizza dough hits the frying pan, it cooks in minutes. I'm going to make two different toppings for my pizzas today. One is Michael's favourite, which is hot and spicy and meaty. And one is my favourite, which is a little controversial, but ham and pineapple. I love pineapple on a pizza, I love the tanginess, the juiciness, the sweetness and I like to pair it with some really nice salty serrano ham, it works really well. But instead of big brash pineapple on its own, because sometimes it's a little bit too juicy and can make your pizza base a bit wet, I'm going to make this into a lovely sticky jammy salsa thing to put on the top. So I'm going to start off by preparing my pineapple, so I'm going to take the top off, I've got a nice sharp knife for this. Now I'm just going to take off the skin. I just absolutely love pineapple on pizza. I don't know how anyone can not enjoy the juicy sweetness on top of their pizza, but everyone's got a different favourite. So why don't you let us know in the comments what yours is. If you don't want to buy a whole fresh pineapple for this, you can use a can of pineapple or a fresh container of chunks. Let's take your juicy pineapple, pop it into the pan. We're going to want to add a little bit of brown sugar just to help it caramelise and get on its way. And then finally some chilli flakes. I love a little bit of heat on my pizzas, not quite as spicy as Michael would have it, but a little bit of chilli works really nicely with that Hawaiian pineapple vibe. Now I'm just going to stir that together and then get this onto the heat until it's lovely and sticky and jammy. So I've got these on a medium heat, I've also got some onions caramelising at the back here for Michael's pizza. So the final thing to do is chop up the mozzarella. 
So I've got a block of cooking mozzarella here. You can use a mozzarella ball, but they usually are quite watery. So this is great because it doesn't have all that excess liquid. So you're not going to have a soggy pizza. And you can tear it if you want, but I like to go for nice little cubes so you can sprinkle it on quickly, get a nice even distribution of cheese. I'm going to make Michael's pizza first, the spicy one. So I'm going to take over my andouille paste, my chorizo, the mozzarella and the pizza sauce. I'm going to get some heat under my frying pan. You want one which is safe to go in the oven with a metal handle, ideally, because it's going to go under the grill a bit later on. So get that on a nice high heat and then we're going to roll out, spread out our pizza dough. So shake a little bit of flour onto your work surface. Take one of your balls of dough. Now we're going to spread this out. Just gently pull it into a nice circular shape. And you're looking to get it into a circle the same size as your frying pan. It's looking really nice. You want it to be a little thick around the edge so you get a good crust on your pizza as well. I'm a big crust fan. So this is perfect, it's ready to go in our frying pan and we're using a frying pan because it's really hard to get that lovely crisp bottom of a pizza just using your oven or grill. The frying pan method helps that bottom get really super hot then it's just finished under the grill to melt the cheese and give those toppings a little bit of colour. So I'm going to be topping my pizza with Muti's classic pizza sauce. This is so rich in flavour, loads of Italian tomatoes in there and it's a really vibrant red colour that's not going to get lost even after cooking, which is going to give our pizza that special touch. You just want a couple of spoonfuls. You don't want to go crazy with the tomato because we've got all those other toppings on there as well. And moisture is the enemy of a crisp pizza. But spread that right on the edge. This is a nice deep pan style pizza because that is my favourite. But if you like it thinner Italian style, you can spread out your dough a little thinner. So now we're going to go on with our mozzarella. If you wanted to make a plain margarita pizza, this would be all you need. So just sprinkle over those cubes of mozzarella. So just use a palette knife to take a quick peek underneath your dough to make sure the base isn't burning but it's becoming nice and brown. So now I'm going to go on with my other spicy toppings. I've got some andouille paste. This is a really spicy sausage paste which is so delicious and it melts really nicely in the oven to make little spicy puddles, so just a couple of dollops. I've got some Spanish chorizo, just a few pieces of that, and then finally some red onions. Let's just grab a few of those out of the pan. These add a really nice sweetness to all of those salty, spicy flavours. So a quick peek at the base should tell me this pizza is ready to go into the oven. And so I've got my grill cranked up as high as it will go. I'm going to put the pizza in until those toppings are lovely and golden brown. So our first pizza is ready. It's got a lovely, thick, fluffy base, which is crispy on the bottom. And the toppings on top are lovely and golden brown. So I'm going to leave that to cool slightly before I slice it whilst I make my second pizza. My pan is still ferociously hot. If you're making more than one pizza, make sure that you put something over your handle because it will be super hot from being under the grill. So lay your second pizza dough into your pan. Get it nicely spread out. And then now it's time for my favourite toppings. I've got my lovely sticky pineapple, lovely bit of spicy sweetness. And then finally, I've got some serrano ham. So I'm just going to tear this up and this will get nice and crispy as it goes under the grill. I just like to finish off the pieces with a few fresh herbs I think it adds a really nice, lovely bit of zing to them. A nice little pop of green against that lovely vibrant red. So a little bit of thyme on the spicy pizza and a nice bit of basil on the ham and pineapple. And then those are ready to go, ready to be sliced up and enjoyed as a cosy night in.